Hello, this is just a quick video to uh, have a look at my Aeon Robotics R1 because I put it together and I've even used it for a dolly shot in a music video already so I thought I'd have a quick uh, video you know, reflection back on the, the build itself and what I've done so far. I mean you can see already that I've um, this is really says some modification you might not actually want to go about doing this just yet to be right honest but I've um, I fastened a uh, tripod mount effectively where I can uh, fix um, a camera onto here with a quick release uh, and can even tilt it and angle it and all that kind of thing um, but that's really just because I want to get out and use it um, Aeon Robotics themselves are working on some adapters that actually mount over these uh, screw points so you won't actually have to do any drilling yourself so uh, I wouldn't worry too much about having to do something like that unless you just want to actually get out there and get something filmed immediately so we'll, we'll take this apart and we can have a look at it Nice thing is here, these screws are toolless really, you can screw them with your thumbs and take them apart. Take out the uh, solar battery. Good thing as well, right? it doesn't take up too much charge, we've still got over 50% left and I've had quite a lot of use of this. In fact you see already I've even uh, managed to uh, Top it over and scratch the top of the here, unfortunately. Right, so this is the build itself, so I'll talk you through it. Obviously, that is a Pixar 2.1 cube, but this is the, the carrier board it comes with. Um, that's just a normal RC receiver, so that's uh, I think a FlySky receiver. Uh, I've just gone for the RC control that um, you know, Robotics normally sell with. Um, Although I've been in the UK, I didn't get the full pack, I just chose the same RC remote off Amazon. I've gone for an old 3DR telemetry radio, now I wouldn't actually recommend doing that, they're not that secure. This was just because I had one kicking about and it was a way of just getting telemetry to it. Um, I mean you can connect, in fact what I normally have, and it should have been connected up, so I must have taken it off already. Uh, where can I find? Oh no, I see it's at the back. That's the uh, USB that goes straight into the uh, Pixhawk. That comes up the top here, so then you can connect into the USB to your computer. So actually, you could just have a long USB lead to this whilst you want to configure anything. Um, it's just if you're doing the um, the compass dance on so the compass dance on this, you've got to spin it around upside down on that. You could get a bit twisted up with the a USB cable, so really that's the only reason I've gone for telemetry radio, but the better option is to get a Raspberry Pi and um, put software on that to do the telemetry, and I've not done that yet, so I can't really tell you the process in that. I don't believe it's hard, but what I need to do is figure that out and do a tutorial, and then that'll be the recommended method of uh, passing back telemetry, I think. So obviously you've got your uh, GPS here that you've fed through. That, that, this is the only uh, minor mod in the install. I mean, you could try and squeeze it down there, but I've just drilled a hole uh, here, and you, there's actually a hole already pre-drilled for it to come out here, so you just fit, feed it down through, and then that's your GPS lead. Um, that's the buzzer, which comes with the Pixar 2. That's just so you can hear a tone, so you know it's, it's powered up okay. I chose to use the, uh, the, uh, the rubber fixtures you've got either side for passing wires out to actually pass out one of the um, antenna. This is the motor controller at the back. I don't know if you can see but it has its own USB connection. So part of the install, the fact the first thing you do, um, actually do bear in mind actually, it does say it power this up without the Pixar, but you need quite a bit of current being drawn for the 3DR battery to stay on. So actually you're better off putting in the Pixar first Put on the here GPS as well, uh, and then power this up, and then this will stay on. But what you need to do is connect this with the USB, and you need to change the setting on it. It's covered in the manual, but you need to tell it that it's being controlled by RC, um, otherwise the motor controller won't work. Um, let's spin this around and have a look. I hope you can still see it's okay on the camera. So you've got outputs one and three here. One goes to one on the controller here. 3 goes to 2 on the control here, so that's literally a plug in there. Um, this connection here is to the uh, receiver, so that's literally all the connections you need to do, really simple. Um, everything else is just your normal Pixar configuration. It comes here with a connection onto the XT60, which tells the not only powers the uh, cube, but it 
tells you how much voltage is coming through the battery. So really that's all you have to do to put this thing together. Um, these are for the optional co-computers if you've got them, which most of you won't be using anyway, so you don't need to worry about them. So that is your install from a hardware viewpoint. So what you'd normally do is, once your hardware is done like that, you put the case down, uh, screw it back together, use the USB on here, connect that to your computer with Mission Planner, and then you can configure it all. So you need to load the Agirova software onto the Pixhawk. Um, you don't even need to do any configuring with that because there's a parameters file for this already, so you can just load that on. All the parameters are set. Now, I do find the parameters on that make it more like a robot, i.e., you know, it just stops immediately. It's very quick. I mean, you can almost bunny hop this thing as you, as you stop quickly, um, which isn't what you want for video. So I have been sort of playing with the tuning to make it. Um, more tame, um, which has helped, uh, but I think you know a little bit more work needs to be done on that by people collectively of uh, making it. Um, for example, we let go of the sticks; it will just stop. I mean, it, it really is um, very, very responsive, which is fantastic if you, you just want to drive this thing around. But for video, it's less so. So you would have to just gradually let the sticks down with video at the moment. Where it'd be good if you let go. If this would itself would just gradually grind to a halt. Uh, just so it doesn't look quite so robotic but um, that's a, a minor niggle really so the, the install itself wonderful easy i was expecting it to be a, bit, a little bit scary it's not it's nowhere near as complicated as putting together a, a drone even that's really not particularly complicated but you know it's a case of no soldering um no stress um you could actually put this thing together uh, from scratch in under an hour. I think with anything, if you've never done it before, um, you take a little bit of time and you sort of double check everything and, and uh, sort of double guess yourself, um, which is why it can take a little bit longer just for that reason. But I think if you have a look at this, understand what's involved, don't, don't be intimidated, just get on and get it done and get out there and start using it. So I hope you found that uh, useful as a sort of first look at what's involved in putting it together. Um, if I get a chance at a later date, I'll, I'll do a more involved tutorial. But just before I finish, I'll, I'll just cover one thing on the, the Pixar, which I've just remembered. Um, there are actually four screw holes uh, on this um, platform. To actually, so you can actually screw the Pixar in. It comes with four screws. It also comes with, I'll just grab one, um, comes with various uh, 3M stickers. I actually go for the thinner ones. So, so personally, I use some 3M stickers, actually one's a bit smaller than that, and I put it on. But you, you do have the option, if you want, to screw this in. But if you are going to do that, don't be don't have it this way up, if you're trying to screw under, because every time you, you uh, lose contact with the screw, it'll fall down. Tip the rover on its side, push the screws through that way. And you also need um, to, to do that, if I can just find it, yeah, here we go. Um, small stubby uh, screwdriver like that. I got that off Amazon, but otherwise, you know, trying to get underneath here and screwing's really tricky. So, I, personally, I just think let's go with the 3M tape, but just to mention that you can do it both ways. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Um, I will be posting more stuff um, from the Rover. I might even do um, a quick example of using um, Adobe Premiere's warp stabiliser and how I used it um, for a music video. Because here you can see I haven't even got a dolly on yet, yet I managed to get um, a usable shot. So I think it would be interesting um, to cover that so that anyone's starting out. Because we've, we've not got to the stage yet of deciding on you know what is a good uh, dolly to go on here. You know, it'd be good to have a Ronin. Um, but the question then is Ronin, you know, at, can we pass through the, the RC control? I mean, really, you'd want to have one of the sticks controlling the um, gimbal. And it'd be nice to have the smart moves integrated so everything was controlled via the Pixar or a companion computer. So I think it'll be into next year before people have decided on the best um, gimbal options uh, for this rover. So anyway, that's me yabbering on. I, I shall end this video for now, but uh, do check back and I'll hopefully I'll be able to uh, do videos that are, are useful to uh, potential owners or new owners. And I know there's a, at least a, a one person already in the UK that's got one on order and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see more people putting content out. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, if you've enjoyed this, subscribe to the channel. Catch you later, bye.